my mum and dad were gaming the bus fare. But I would run to Celtic Park and spend the money on sweets and run home. <laughs> Eddie, how amazing is it for you? Because we've not really got to speak to you much since Leeds United have been promoted. How amazing is it for you? You know, like you say, you watch them, you're there every single game to see them back oh, in the It's so league. important for the football club. I mean, what, what, what we've got to remember, Leeds is a big city. There's only one team in the city. And the passion the fans have got for the football club. I mean, obviously, you know, we sell out every week. I mean, if the stadium held 50,000, we would sell out every week. So it's so important that we stay in the Premier League. And it, it, it's, it's just great for the city. You know, it gives the city a lift. It gives everybody in the city a lift. You know, because, you know, people all over the world are watching Leeds United play in the Premier League. And, you know, that's important for the city, as well as the football club. You've... You've been through it all, Eddie, with us, you know, from, from the highest of highs back at, back in the 60s and 70s and then obviously the Champions League, you were a huge, yeah. huge part of that, that, that drive. Um, but and then, the low points as well. <laughs> and, and I'm just going to get on to the very, very low points, you know, whether it's relegation, whether it's relegation, again, it's, it's administration, dot point. Was there any point during those those real dark years that you were like I don't know if this club's going to ever get out of this you always have a belief that someday it will happen but I mean the doubts are there yeah. and that's why you know like you know Mar Marcella Bielsa has done such a wonderful job for the football club uh, and it's important it is important that, that we maintain our Premier League status you know you know, for the football club, because nowadays, you know, like if you disappear, you know, and it's happened to a lot of big clubs over the years, you know, they disappear, you know, for the Premier League and they slip down another division. You know, I mean, you, you, you take Sunderland Football Club, a right. big football club with a vast support, you know, they're playing, you know, League One football. Yeah. So it's, it's difficult, you know, if you slip out of the Premier League. So keeping, keeping in the Premiership, ship, it means a lot to the city and obviously it means a lot to the Leeds United fans. Eddie, you spoke about what Marcelo Bielsa has done. How has he galvanised this side? What has he done with this Leeds well, United Well, to be team? perfectly honest with you, I think he's done extraordinary things. I mean, I've got to be honest and, and I've not been unfair to the players. But before Marcelo came, some of the players that are playing in the team at the present time never showed the qualities that were shown since Marcelo came and coached them. Mm -hmm. and, and that says a lot for Marcelo, it says a lot for the players uh, themselves. I mean, if you were to say to me uh, two or three seasons ago, our players would be able to go out and match most teams in the Premier League, <laughs> right. it, some there would probably say, oh, well, you, yeah. you know, locked you up, I think. <laughs> oh, because, you know, you know, like, you, know you had your doubts. But yeah. since Marcelo came in, I think that's why the the players respond so well to him. Because I think they know mm. that Marcelo's improved them so much. Uh, and and improved and improved the image of the football club as yeah. well. I mean, how many people do you hear saying, Oh, Leeds United they were second favourite team, we love watching Leeds United. Yeah, because no. they play a good brand of football, they play a, they play a passionate brand of football. Mm. So it's just great. I don't think we were many people's second favourite in your day, were we? No, definitely not. No, <laughs> no. We had one or two players that kicked too many players. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Eddie, do you see many similarities between um, the, the side that you I were can part see of and this league? Similarities United? for the point of view, uh, the progress. But, I mean, see, the, the difference is I think that Don Revy as assembled. A lot of great players. I mean, when I played, we had 14, 15 full, un full international players playing, you know, on the books and, you know, could play at the very highest level. I don't think that the players have reached that stage just yet, but they're capable of it. You know, they, you know, a lot of the players, are, you know, it's, it's new to them. You know, you even take, you know, Calvin Phillips, for instance. You know, Calvin a few years ago was playing the championship. Now he's an international player. He's a big name in football. 
So that that's progression. Mm. You know, and you've got a few young players at the club coming through. I mean, you, you take the players that are at the club, and we've had a few injuries recently to important players for us. Um, I think we've done remarkably well. And we've, 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 no, no, I, I mean, that kind of leads on to what I was going to ask. We know we've got a small squad. Sorry, Matt, I interrupted um, you there. You know, and, and that's, that's, the, that's the reality of, of modern day football in that at the, the, the money is such that we can't go and spend hundreds of millions of pounds every year on loads of players and getting lots of great squad players. Um, we, we can only play with this core bunch of, of players. Um, and let's not deny, like you said, so we've had some key injuries this year and that yeah, has yeah. definitely played a part. I think, I think what you've got to remember is, and, and I don't care who it is, you can talk about your Liverpools, your Man Cities, your Man Uniteds, Chelsea's. You take five players out of any side, five top players, they're all going to struggle. Right. You know, you take five players out of the Man City side, you would think, oh, they'll struggle today. Yeah. You know, most teams, I mean, although they say they've got, we say we've got a small squad and they've got 25, you know, players in their squad, and they're not they're not the same quality. Are they starting 11 or the 15 or the 15 players have got? Right. No, yeah. because teams don't carry. Because the best players, you know, and they're going to sit on the bench every week. Right. They want to play, so we'll, we'll move on. Mm -hmm. So when when people say that about a small squad, it is a small squad, and it's, it's just a worry, you know, for an injury point of view. But we we get away from home, and we've got a few injuries to key players, as you know. We get a result. You know, because the players that are at the football club are working hard for the club and working hard for each other. You know, and, and I, I'm not a great believer in, you know, people saying, oh, you need a 25-man squad. You're not going to have 25 great players playing. No. No, no, no club in the league. And I'm, I'm including the best, I'm yeah. including Chelsea and Liverpool in that. As I say, you, you take, if I say to you, right, OK, Liverpool are going to play with Virgil van Dijk and Mo Salah for the next five weeks, you would think, ooh, they could struggle a bit. Yeah. And that's only two players. <laughs> You know. We talk so much about um, the training and the fitness of this Leeds United side, as, like particularly since Marcelo Bielsa's yeah. come in. How much of that can you attribute to their success? You know, is that part of the reason they are so successful? Because we've seen them time and time again find just that extra bit towards the end of a game. Yeah, but I mean. If you play the game, most teams should be fit, you know. I'm always a great believer, I always say, you know, I don't care how much talent you've got. If you can't run, you can't play. Right. Forget about the talent, you've got to be able to get about the pitch. And the team I played, and I, we played with a lot of great players. I played with a lot of great players. But the, great, the, the talent they had didn't make us a football team alone. It was the fitness levels we had. In all teams, it's your fitness level. That is the one thing there's no excuse for. You know, no been fit enough every week right. to go out and run about for 90 minutes or 90 minutes plus. Mm. So when people say, oh, the Leeds United team is such a fit, fit team, it should be, <laughs> you know. And that, that, that's the nature of the game for me. And that's why, you know, if, if you get the best teams and the players with the best, the best players, you know, in the starting 11s, if they work as hard as the opposition who are inferior, nine times out of 10, they win the games. Right. You know, there you go, because Matt. they get better players to start with and they work hard. All you've got to do is start running. You'll be part of this Leeds team in no time. <laughs> as soon as I get this boot off, I'll get right back to it. As soon as I get my yeah. broken leg fixed, I'll be right there in yeah. the gym. I'll be running. You, you, yeah. You'll see. Um, but Eddie, I mean, you yourself, you place so much emphasis on your own fitness. I mean, we won't yeah. talk about your age, but you run five miles a day, I believe. Is that true? I don't run every day now. I run about four days a week. Oh, just four oh, then, Eddie. I mean, that's still pretty <laughs> remarkable. If, just if the I 20 miles a week. It's not, it's, it's not <laughs> remarkable. It's something I've, I've just always done throughout my life. You know, even, even when I was coaching and managing, I used to keep myself fit. I try and keep myself fit. But when I say I run now, I don't run. I jog. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a bit different. That, that's my definition of a run, Eddie. That's always yeah. what yeah. I've done. I, I've always yeah. jogged. <laughs> but Absolutely. do you find that difficult, or is that something that you've genuinely always found enjoyable? What, what I think I'm yeah, saying is... I find is, it difficult to... Oh, no, I, I mean, I love getting up in the morning and going for a run. Yeah, I do. I Even when it. you're huffing and puffing, 
Because I know that if, you know, stick me on a I'm treadmill. I'm not huffing and puffing a lot. I don't go that quick now to huff and puff a lot. <laughs> you know. But I suppose... A, a, a jog at a comfortable pace. That there <laughs> is the difference between a professional athlete and me and Emma. Is, is yeah. that, well. is, you know, someone who's got, who's got that mentality... The, yeah, but um, the thing about that is as well, right, you know, like when I was a young kid and growing up in Glasgow, I was a big Glasgow Celtic fan, and we lived about four or five miles away from Celtic Park, right? you know. And, you know, my mum and dad would give me the bus fare. But I would run to Celtic Park right. and spend the money on sweets <laughs> and run home, you know. And, you know, I've always done it. You know, I've always that. done it. We do have another grey who is uh, making waves at the minute in, uh, well, you know, albeit just starting on the career. Um, but Archie, um, how, uh, how's he looking at the minute? I mean, do you, do you see that work ethic in him? Well, he we have a work ethic and because his dad played football as well. You know, I mean, Archie's doing very well. I mean, he's only a young kid. He, he's playing with the schoolboys just now. Um, hopefully he can go on and progress. But, you know, he, somebody like, like that, he's, he's only a young kid, so you don't put too much pressure on sure. him. But because if it becomes a player, that's pressure enough anyway. You know, right. when you when you get when you get there, you know you you got to keep working. I mean, I mean, I get in the team, you know, when I was 17 at Leeds, and throughout your career, you got to keep working and keep trying and improving because every year there's new people coming to the football <laughs> right. club. You know, so you just got to keep on top of it. Oh, you know, Archie's done well. He's, he's playing with England schoolboys, but just let him go on with just now and enjoy his football. If if somebody came to you and they'd never heard of Leeds United, they didn't know what they were, what the club represented, how would you describe this club to them? A football club uh, has built itself up to be one of the most respected respected clubs in the country, and we are. And people, I think the thing about Leeds United now is that people know about the passion of the fans. Uh, they know about the club. Um, for when I, it, to tell you the truth, before I joined Leeds United, when I was 15 and came to Leeds United, before I came to Leeds United, or before a scout called John Barr invited me down for a, for a weekend, I'd never heard of the club. <laughs> and that's a strange thing to say, but I'd never heard of them. Because I was growing up in the 50s, a great Celtic fan. The big clubs in England were Manchester United, you know, the Tottenham Hotspur size, the great Wolverhampton Wanderers size, the late 50s. And, you know, when I was young, you know, Leeds United had never won anything. But now I feel that everybody, most football supporters in the world, you know, if you mention Leeds United, they'll know who you're talking about. It's time now for our moment of the week with Boost Drinks. So you guys have been sending in your own suggestions, some great ones here actually. Joe's tweeted in to suggest his moment of the week is Bielsa funding a gym at Ellen Road for the well-being of the club's staff in relation to reports this week that Marcelo has paid for the improvement. I mean, that's incredible, isn't it, Matt? I mean, that's, that is from what we know of, of Marcelo. That's him through and through, isn't it? I mean, he's done it at, at, yeah. at clubs that he's been at um, previously and that's why he's... He's regarded as sort of more than just a great manager, but just a great human being. Like he genuinely cares about everyone involved at the club, not just the players, not just his own job, but just everyone involved in that team. Uh, he he cares about, and and he cares about the city now as well, and leaving a lasting legacy. I mean, that's just that's that's the man through and through. I mean, he's he's. Yeah, we love We him, certainly we? do, and you've summarised it perfectly there. Lee Wood has also tweeted in to suggest the Leeds fans chanting at Stuart Dallas's name after the Norwich game was uh, was his moment of the week. Uh, it was a few days after Stuart had talked about the loss of a good friend of his to COVID. Did you hear that, Matt? I mean, they were really going for it for him, weren't they? I mean, that's all you could hear yeah. on the TV was was the Leeds was the Leeds fans. Um, they were fantastic all game, but that in particular, um, again, like it just shows what a real community club this this is. Uh, I mean, it always has been, but right now it just feels like we're all just one we're all just one team just pushing in the same direction, and it's so nice to see. And 
and you could see that it was you know it, it, it helped the players out on the field as well it really did and obviously we here at the official Leeds United podcast have sent Stuart Dallas all of our love now for our final moment yeah. of the week we are actually going to welcome a Leeds fan live from Oslo in Norway to the podcast to explain what happened to him last weekend so very warm welcome to Nick Whitley hello Yay. Nick, thank you, thank you so much for joining us. I am probably like too excited to have you on because I love this story so much. For anyone listening who doesn't know what <laughs> happened, please tell them, Nick. Well, yeah, I um, after the Wolves game actually the other week, um, I had uh, a little visit from three police officers uh, shortly following the game. Uh, yeah, worrying about my well-being, uh, basically, was the, yeah, the cut a long story short. For, what, from um, the, yeah, so... Os, Oslo Constabulary, was it? Yeah, it was, uh, uh, yeah, it was interesting. I was just actually on my way out. I was going to go and watch the evening game uh, with my uh, a few of my friends down in, uh, down in town. And uh, I turned all the lights off, and I was about to reach for the door, and then suddenly I heard a knock. And then... Um, yeah, there's three, three police officers there. One with a, well, they had a shield with them. Um, I don't know what they were expecting. And they were like, yeah, um, we've heard of a disturbance in the building. And I was like, oh, really? I've not really noticed anything. And they're like, mm, yeah, from your apartment, really. Um, so I was like, well, come in and have a look around. Um, so in they came with torches. I was like, well, you can, I can put the lights on here. <laughs> <laughs> but in they came um, but they did see the funny side in the end anyway I didn't really think about it and uh, I told my mates who'd been to the game as well there was a few of the lads a season to get older so I texted, I texted them back home and then uh, I told my mates down the pub and then later on in the sort of evening I uh, found out that it was all over Twitter and then it kind of grew arms and legs from there basically and uh, yeah it's pretty funny <laughs> So, and so. here you are now, Nick. You've been hailed as an absolute hero, and rightly so. It is the best story, is it not, Matt? So, uh, so it was what the penalty yeah, equaliser. I mean, I'm not like. And you're you're screaming. It must have been. I, I I don't actually remember what I must have done. To be honest, um, I'm not. One of them. You're trashing well, I'm not the place. One of them and, and yeah, like, I'm not really like a... one of them people who sort of is pouncing <laughs> up and down all game and stuff, but. I'm prone to, you know, the odd outburst, especially with like moments like that. And right. You can't kind of help yourself, I <laughs> and, guess. And uh, obviously there was a few. Maybe a lost in translation mm. slightly when you're like, get in! Uh, but in Norwegian, that's something I'm really else. I'm sure that's <laughs> what I did. And I think maybe someone might have thought that I'd like fallen off a ladder and hurt myself or something because it would have been like two big outs, oh, one for the penalty, <laughs> one for the actual goal going in. And then uh, I just went, oh, great, uh, now I'll head down the pub. And then that was, uh, and then confronted by a policeman. So, uh, yeah. Wow. Interesting. Well, Nick, it's, a, it's, it's yeah. our pleasure to report that you yes. are safe and well. And you just got yeah. a bit overly excited. And it has been a great contribution to moment of the week. And do you know what, Matt? I think Joe's tweet and Lee's tweet are both brilliant as well. Should we just if make them all winners? If we're allowed to do that, if we can get hold of two, two crates of boost drinks, then why not? Well, yeah. No, three. We've got to give oh, one to Oh, so we've got Joe, well. Lee and we Nick. We can't forget about Nick, three of them, fine. And then maybe we should get a fourth one for the Oslo Constabulary, oh, just for oh. being so attentive to their population. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that'll keep their energy up, won't it? Exactly. We've got Carrying to go knocking on any shields. more uh, excited Leeds United fans' doors. <laughs> um, right, well, well done to Joe, Lee, and of course, you to Nick. You have won yourself a crate of boo yeah, drinks. Oh, See, yeah. it was worth it, wasn't it, Nick, that visit? Look what you've bagged yourself there. 